do privilege and climate change have in common? Well, they both exist, even if you think they don't. So we're doing this, and I don't know if I'm happy about it. No. 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 You have been warned. Let the demonetization process begin! Ah, privilege. As far as some people are concerned, privilege should be lumped with Bigfoot and UFOs as something a few folks are convinced exist, but can't show any compelling evidence to prove it. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's very real. I mean, I won't deny that privileges exist and all, but quantifying them in such a way that it applies universally across the board is kind of impossible in my perspective at least, the way that I understand what privileges are. Contrary to what right-wing pundits and radical white supremacists would have you believe, pretending privilege doesn't exist doesn't make it disappear. Wow, way too straw man right out of the gate, Anita. How's that privilege of being a person born in America with the right to freedom of speech treating you? If you're gonna go call someone a white supremacist, why wouldn't you call them out directly by name? It's not Tinkerbell, folks. So what is privilege? In simple terms, privilege theory argues that each individual is embedded in a matrix of categories and contexts, and will be in some hey, way- um, Anita, do you mind if I try something here? Sure. Great. Um, okay, so to help illustrate the concept of privilege, let's imagine we're creating a character in a video game. Now, ours is an open world game that's designed to be very realistic. You know, I find it rather funny that in order to actually get across your point about the very reality of people's lives every day, that you, you know, seek to simplify and define, you choose to describe it in such a way that is through the lens of a fictional, digitally created fantasy. What do you think that says about your theory? and models real-life situations and challenges. Hmm. You see, there is a fundamental flaw with exactly what it is you're proposing here, and it applies to real life, believe it or not, fam. Let's see if you can't catch what it is that I'm talking about and referring to. School, work, relationships, and so on. It's a meticulously crafted, expansive recreation of- <laughs> <laughs> No. And now we're going to fast forward about 30 seconds through the awkward attempt at a joke that I don't care about. It's the good stuff the meat and potatoes. In order to accurately simulate real life, the programmers have made it so that the world of the game will treat you very differently, depending on the choices you make when creating your character. Starting with the first choice the game gives you, if you want the easier option, you put the gender setting on male. Set it to female, and you have to contend with sexism in the game's world. Set it to non-binary, and you'll face misunderstandings, social exclusion, and the constant challenge of living in a world that isn't designed to accommodate you. Hold up. The world isn't designed to accommodate a single goddamn person individually, fam. Holy frick. If you think that I am at all being accommodated because I happen to be born with certain features as opposed to other features, you got another thing coming, hon. No one is accommodated to. Life isn't fair, and it's... A struggle, frankly, for each of us from birth to climb that ladder and become the best people that we can be, despite any struggles and hardships we face along the way. Everyone's got them. No one is safe. Game characters who have the setting on male have the privilege of not having to deal with any of that. Whoa, not having to deal with sexism would be awesome. It's great, frankly. I do it every day. It takes such little effort to ignore the bare minimum amount of barefooted women in the kitchen jokes that I get thrown at me online because they're, that, they're just that. Jokes. It's very easy to ignore jokes. Granted, um, I'm actually barefooted right now while filming this, so it's not the most inaccurate thing on the planet <laughs> to make a joke about we go in the kitchen barefooted. It's actually quite nice. We should all be in the kitchen. I enjoy good food as much as the next person. Right? You want to try? Yeah. Uh, okay, so it looks like race is up next. Obviously, white is going to be the easiest option here, right? No, not if you're trying to get scholarships for college. To apply for a lot of them, specifically the ones that are offered at my school, you have to be a person of color. But more than that, you have to deal with fuck-headed mini-shits like you, who think that any and all of life's ailments are contingent upon one's race, gender, and whatever type of meat they want to suck on that night. Is it gonna be fish? Is it gonna be sausage? Who the fuck knows? I don't. Yep. 
choose anything else on the spectrum and you're going to be subject to some form of racism, which could manifest in countless ways. Wow. <laughs> the complete lack of awareness. I know we've all seen this kind of thing in an inordinate amount of times before, but every time I hear someone say that you can't be racist towards white people, it fucking buckles my mind to no end. The amount of mental hurdles and flips you have to go through in order to find yourself in such a deluded line of thinking, you've essentially cucked yourself is just... I, I can't. I can't. Chalk it up to um, mental immaturity. I don't know. But I fucking just can't fathom this. And I've tried. Believe me, I've tried. But I can't. I don't know. It's just, Good luck graduating from a decent school, finding a decent job, or qualifying for a loan, hypothetical player character. You, you can't fucking win even when you do, can you? You can get there, but it's almost always going to be harder. And as a bonus, people will assume you got there through some sort of affirmative action game hack. <laughs> Excuse me, you must be coming down with something. Oh, and any random interaction with law enforcement might result in your death. That, in fact, is something that goes for everyone, honey. You know, it is funny. I find it interesting, in fact, that you bring up the whole getting shot by police officer thing, because it should be noted that if you happen to be in the position of a penis, your chances of getting shot by a police officer skyrocket exponentially. I mean, just look at the statistics of the 378 police shootings that have occurred in 2018 thus far. 96% or 361 shootings have occurred to males. Now I wonder, does that mean that the police are sexist against men? Does that mean that women have more privilege than men do? I, I don't know, man. That's the way this logic seems to be playing out for me. I mean, I know that if this logic remains unchecked, then Anita's entire argument about men being more privileged than women falls apart entirely. Because this one aspect disproves the rule that systemically women are more pressed than men. But if it is checked, then that means that the claim that black involved police shootings happen because of racist police officers is abhorrently false, simply because a uh, statistical coincidence does not depict an ism or an ist. It is certainly one of those pickles of thought that we've found ourselves in, and oh my, I love a good pickle. There's no such thing as a perfect run for you. Those who play as white characters enjoy the privilege of not having to worry about that. <laughs> they sure do. Oh, you have that st- Oh, no you don't. What a shame! I guess I'll just chop this up to a straw man then. Oh, are you making a character for Real Life Simulator 2K18? Yeah, we sure are. And the next option is whether our character is cis or trans. You know, I get asked this question quite frequently on this channel. And no, I'm not going to answer just because you asked. I don't need the oppression points. I'm already ginger. Midget. With autism. <laughs> Surprise! Cis is way easier. Some of the scenarios the developers have created for those playing as trans characters are a real nightmare. And not like in some Dark Souls, oh, what a satisfying challenge kind of way. I'm talking stuff nobody wants or should have to deal with. Like what? Wow, so there's also an option to select what class you're born into. I want to see what it's like to be in the 1%. Now oh, we're talking, this is where it's at. This is where all the shenanigans happen. This is what all the fucking fuss is about, guys. You know, I'm actually fucking hella surprised that you included this at all, the class division, Anita, because it's not something a lot of people like to dwell on when talking about identity politics. And the injustices people face because the spark of the matter is that anyone, anyone of any race, creed, nationality, gender, sexuality, etc. can be in the 1%, effectively dismantling the rest of everything else. Kudos where kudos is due, fam. Congrats. That's called playing on easy mode. Sip champagne on your yacht, secure in the knowledge that many people will assume you're somehow smarter, more attractive, or more worthy of the protection of the law simply because you're rich. Raise your hand if you are like me in the mid or lower-ranged economic class, yet are still somehow privileged based on the other various identities that they've rattled off prior to this one. Hell, you don't even have to be a member of the 1% to experience an easier time in the game. How about just being comfortably middle class and never having to choose between buying groceries or having the bus fare to get to work? That's a side quest no one wins. Basically, if your player character is poor or working class, 
you're going to spend a huge chunk of your electronic life facing a never-ending stream of soul-sucking challenges. OMG, it's almost like everyone has different experiences in their own way and the mere amalgamation of all of these factors means that there's no one shoe fits all function for everybody to stick their toes into. How strange. I'm never doing that again. And that's incomprehensible to people who have money. And it looks like that's just scratching the surface. There are so many other options here that can have a tremendous impact on your experience. Where you land on the sexuality spectrum, whether you're able-bodied or disabled, the list really goes on. You're negating a very important aspect of this triage of traits that has an overall impact on gameplay. I mean life. Um, now, what on earth could that possibly be? Yeah, and for each individual setting, there's one option that matches what society considers normal and therefore gives you the privilege of not facing any oppression or social injustice as a result. And then there are options that bring with them a host of obstacles and oppressions. Come on. We all know this whole concept of normal is ludicrous. There's no normal setting on human beings. Not normal per se, but there is a case to be made for statistical averages, trends, and overwhelming tendencies. <clears throat> An able-bodied, cisgender, straight white man is no more normal than a queer trans Japanese guy or a disabled Nigerian woman or anyone else. Right, it's nonsense like heteronormativity and cisnormativity that helps perpetuate the oppression of queer and trans folks. You see, our culture treats heterosexuality as the normal setting and views other sexualities as deviations from that. I don't want to be that person that points out that specific genitals have specific functions that they are meant to serve because I believe that sex can be more than just for procreation. But let's be honest, their overall function does denote that there would be a tendency towards one over the other in certain areas, guys. I mean, come on. Similarly, under cisnormativity, so being cisgendered, which means having a gender identity that meshes with the gender you were assigned at birth, that's viewed as the standard setting, and trans people are seen as other. Now, considering that the estimated number of people who identify as trans in the United States is less than two-thirds of a percent, or like 1,397,150 people, we can kind of make the argument that being cis is the norm. Overwhelmingly so, in fact. Let me put this into perspective for you guys. Anita, the amount of people in the United States who have schizophrenia is about 2.2 million, an arguably larger number, but arguably. No, it is a larger number, but I'd like to see you make the argument that that is also a norm. It should be noted I'm not trying to disrespect my transgender audience or my schizophrenic audience when I say that. One is not the other, and I'm not making an equivalence in any respect. Just trying to put the numbers into perspective. My goal is not to piss off the LGBTQ community in this video. I'll do it in a later date, but not right now. And of course, white and male are wrongly viewed as the default settings on race and gender. Who thinks that? Seriously, who the fuck thinks that? Holy frick. I mean, damn. Fun fact, though, it is true that in all cases of reproduction, the X chromosome is the first to express itself in the first five to eight weeks of gestation before the Y chromosome kicks in and dumps the embryo into a nice little vat of androgen. So I guess there is an argument that can be made that the default sex is female, because in the event that you don't get dumped into androgen or testosterone, you will actually continue your development as a female rather than a male, despite having a Y chromosome. But that's like super rare. But um, in case you were wondering, gentlemen, this is why you have nipples. <sighs> I miss my developmental class. Now, as for the race default setting things, who says that? I really would like to know who says that. People who fall within the normative groups in our culture have the privilege of, well, being seen as normal in that way and not having to deal with all the discrimination that can occur when you're seen as something else. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, okay? Come, come in close, guys. Come, come in real close. Come in real close. Oh, fuck, fuck, too close, too close, too close. You can be discriminated or discriminate against literally everything. What? I know, I was shocked too when I realized I could choose between Pepsi and Coke. That's the beauty of free will, though. the ability to choose. That's what I've been getting at this whole fucking video. So given the choice between STEM fields and the humanities, how much you want to bet a woman is going to choose the humanities over STEM field? I would put half a box of donuts on that shit. That's a lot of donuts. I could eat a whole bunch, but I would bet them. 
what about a young child from the inner city choosing between his education and the group of friends who do drugs behind the school? It's likely he'll choose his friends. Bleak? Fuck yes. That's, that's exactly what it is. But you see, the beauty of free will is that there is the option to make the decision for yourself to better yourself. And that's what I think we should be focusing on, honestly. Educating people. That privilege that they have is not their identities. It can't be just chalked up to the color of their skin. It's their right to choose that gives them privilege. It's their right to choose who they want to be for the rest of their lives that allows them that privilege. Now, a lot of people like to respond to these arguments by saying things like, hey, I'm an able-bodied, cisgender, straight white guy, and I haven't had it easy. And you know what, Kevin? Tremendous obstacles and hardships can occur in anyone's life. <clears throat> Obligatory Nightwing buttocks here. But there's a clear and important distinction. Any hardships an able-bodied, cisgender, straight white man faces in our culture aren't specifically a result of them being able-bodied, cisgender, straight, white, or male. Well, I mean, there are a few things that can be said about the family courts in Title IX, affirmative action, scholarship programs passing over these people, incentivizing race and gender over merit and job quotas. I could go on, but I won't. I think I've made my point effectively. Those are all privileged groups who don't have to deal with the discrimination that members of other groups have to deal with. Cockamamie! <laughs> This is about systemic issues that affect people because of the disadvantaged populations that they belong to. Name me one on your side. I've already named like six to the contrary. And remember, just because you experience privilege in one area of your life doesn't mean that you do on others. Which is why this whole fucking progressive stack of identity politics is fucking bullshit and you know it. You might be a straight white man, but remember the class setting? Surprise! If you're poor, some of the advantages you thought you had are no longer available to you. It's, it's not just me that thinks it's weird that they're incorporating the class angle willingly. Right? Anyone else thinks it's weird? We use the example of a game to explore issues of privilege, but of course, none of us create our characters before playing real life. Nope, which is why the choice aspect after the fact is so goddamn important. None of us opt in to any of these forms of social injustice, and none of us earn the advantages that come with whatever forms of privilege we possess. It can sometimes be difficult to see our own privilege, because often that privilege is simply that we benefit from not having to face the oppressions that other folks do, which puts us at an advantage. Please, why don't you tell me exactly the privileges that I have that others do not? Thank you. In White Privilege, Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack, scholar and anti-racism activist Peggy McIntosh identified 26 ways that she benefits from white privilege, including, I can be sure that if I need legal or medical help, my race will not work against me. Show me the proof that that has occurred, and I will show you a lawyer that will happily sue on your behalf. If a traffic cop pulls me over, I can be sure I haven't been singled out because of my race. I know that when I was interning with my local police department, when we made traffic stops, it was always because they had violated a traffic law. It's so weird, go figure, right? I mean, why would you do that? And when I am told about my national heritage or about civilization, I am shown that people of my color made it what it is. No, not really, no. But Peggy McIntosh is like 83 years old, so her education and my education are extremely different. Now maybe you're a white person who thinks, but I'm one of the nice ones. I individually don't do anything to actively contribute to the oppression of people of color. But... And maybe you don't, but it doesn't change the fact that you benefit from being white and other folks are disadvantaged because they're not. Prove it. Don't just say it prove both of those individual claims and then I'll take you seriously. How about that? No one is asking you to apologize to them directly because your ancestors owned slaves. They didn't though. They were poor fucking farmers in the middle of goddamn Poland before they migrated here about a hundred years ago. Fam. We are asking you to recognize that the systems put in place by your forefathers still disproportionately benefit you. How? Name me one way the system discriminates exclusively against people of a specific identity of people. So here's your straw man back. 
Oh, she got that. Oh, damn. She How did she know that? I'd already packed up the straw man award and shipped it back home. Thank you. I was just gearing up, getting ready to make that specific joke. A lot of us are resistant to recognizing our privilege. We might feel like we're being made to feel guilty because we belong to a privileged group. Yeah, guys, no need to feel guilty. It's cool. But... But saying stuff like, well, excuse me for being white, is really not a good look. These conversations are not about guilt, and feeling defensive about it doesn't help anyone. Neither is this video. This is about taking responsibility and doing our part to recognize and dismantle these unjust systems. Somehow, it's still your responsibility. The truth is that most of us exist with some combination of unearned advantage and unearned disadvantage. There, there you go. That, that's all that's necessary to say. Dividing people up based on their identities doesn't even get you fucking close to a true qualifier of those advantages and disadvantages, fam. Nor does acknowledging them give you a solution in any sense. And we can only begin to address that once we acknowledge that these systems exist and that we probably have some privilege within them ourselves. Point me to one system, and then you know what? Give me a solution to it. I'm a lazy fuck, I got finals, you do the work. <sighs> I don't have him with me today. He is back home. But in his stead, I will use the straw man that you have so graciously presented me with as the straw man award. You deserve it, Anita. Wholeheartedly and fully, you deserve it. Hey, if you like my content, please consider checking out the Patreon, Amazon, and Teespring links in the description down below. If you like my stuff, but not necessarily that much, that's cool, man. You can still like, comment, share, subscribe, for more.